Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good evening. Yang berbahagia, Tan Sri Dato' Azman Mukhtar, Managing Director of Hasanah National Berhad. Yang berbahagia, Dato' Muhammad Faiz Azmi, President of the Malaysian Institute of Accountants, MIA. Yang berbahagia, Dato' Zaitun Muhammad Hassan, Vice President of MIA. Yang dihormati Encik Khalid Han, Abdullah Han, Pengarah Sektor Audit Kewangan, Bahagian Pejabat Timbalan Ketua Audit Negara Kewangan, representing the Auditor General of Malaysia. Yang berusaha Dr. Nur Mazilah Datuk Mahzan, Chief Executive Officer of MIA. Tan Sri Tan Sri, Datuk Datuk, MIA Past Presidents, MIA Past Registrars, MIA Present and Past Council Members, MIA Past CEOs, Friends from the Media, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second MIA 50th anniversary commemorative lecture titled Accountability and Sustainability, the Role of Accountants. The commemorative lecture is part of a line of activities being organized to celebrate an important milestone for MIA and the accountancy profession, which is the Golden Jubilee celebration since the establishment of MIA on 30th September 1967. To honour this momentous occasion, a series of three commemorative lectures by iconic MIA members are being organised throughout the year, revolving around the theme, Integrity, Accountability and Trust. Tonight's lecture is the second out of the three lecture series and revolves around the second theme of the MIA 50th anniversary celebration, Accountability. It is definitely an honour to have the highly esteemed Yang Berbahagia Tan Sri Dato' Azman Mohtar to be the guest speaker for tonight's lecture. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's now invite Yang Berbahagia Dato' Muhammad Faiz Azmi, the President of MIA, to deliver his welcome and introductory remarks. If you please, Dato'. Dato' Zaitun Mat Hassan, Vice President MIA, Dr. Nur Mozilla Dato' Mazan, CEO MIA, and Bruce Her, Encik Khalid Khan, Auditors General's Office, Tantitansi Datuk Datuk, fellow accountants, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum and good evening. Welcome to the second MIA anniversary lecture to commemorate MIA's 50th anniversary. To celebrate our birthday, we're very honoured to have with us an illustrious accountant, Tansri Datuk Azman Haji Mokta, as our second speaker in the series. Tansri will be speaking about one of the three accounting virtues, accountability, but he'll put his own spin on it, which is accountability and sustainability, the role of accountants. Tansri Azman is the Managing Director of Kazna National Berhad, the strategic investment holding company of Government of Malaysia, and has been there since 2004. He's also the chairman of the Iskandar Investment Berhad, uh, Agziata Group Berhad, and holds various board memberships, including Yayasan Kazana and Jadwa Investments of Saudi Arabia. He serves on various public bodies, including the Performance Management and Delivery Unit, the MIFC, the MIA, Malaysian Innovation uh, Agency, the other MIA. Uh, he also sits on the Board of Trustees. Actually, there are a few. There's also the Malaysian Investors Association. So next time, we have to choke the name first properly. Lah. So he also sits on the Board of Trustees of the Asia Business Council, the INSEAD East Asia Council, and the Global Agenda on the role of business for the 2011 World Economic Forum. Formerly, he was Managing Director and Co-Founder of Bina Fikir Sinir Berhad, Head of the Country Research for Salomon Smith Barney, Malaysia, and a Director, Head of Research of Union Bank of Switzerland in Malaysia. Uh, he obtained his Master's in Philosophy from the University of Cambridge, a postgraduate diploma in Islamic Studies from the International Islamic University of Malaya. He is a fellow Chartered Accountant and a Chartered Financial Analyst. Now, Tansi has had an illustrious career over the years, but what of the man himself? Tansi has had many accolades, uh, one of which um, I noted was in 2016, he was named Edge Magazine's Outstanding CEO of the Year and Value Creator. Now, I've known Tansi for over 40 years, which may be surprising considering how youthful I look. <laughs> <coughs> well, you have more white hair than me. <laughs> That's true, you have hair. <laughs> so Tansi was my senior at school uh, and was actually the debating team person tasked with training me and my colleagues in the gentle art of verbal fisticuffs. I learned many things from Tansri, but what struck me then and still continues to impress me now 
is the intellectual curiosity he has and the ferociousness of his convictions. It can't be easy being the head of a sovereign fund, being in the limelight where every decision is scrutinized. But Tan Sri seems to relish it, and he never seems to shy away from making the hard decisions, even if it seems unpopular. His term as Kazna's head saw the transformation of the GLC companies under him to regional and world leaders that they are today. We're no longer just Jago Kampongs, and we can now be proud of brands like CIMB, IHH, and Axiata, to name but a few. And who can forget the multicolored books that he used in the transformation of GLCs, which has been widely copied around the world? Uh, also by PwC, I have to say. <clears throat> Let's give you credit. <laughs> so back in the days we had Blackberries, it was also not uncommon to have emails from him at three in the morning, and he would reply immediately to your emails. So much so, many of us would pretend we were asleep until subuh, so that we didn't have to enter into an email conversation at three in the morning. He's, he is also a man of conviction. I have the pleasure of working with Tansri on the mass restructuring, and his advice to me as administrator was always to do the right thing, even if it meant going against the Kazna view. In fact, his favorite refrain was, to do no harm, which characterized the extraordinary efforts we all took to minimize the impact of the people of mass. Tansri is also famous for his one-liners. I remember being in his meeting room one, one time and having him point to a stuffed elephant on his speakerphone and said to me, Faiz, this is the only elephant in the room, so everything else we can discuss. He once commented on Kazna's role as shareholders by saying, we don't bulldoze unless there's a bull or doze. And my favorite, there's, there is this Vidal Sassoon principle we apply, which is, we look good if you look good. Tansri is always reading and always digesting new information. I wonder if he even sleeps. His library at home is full of books of varying topics from economics to history, from Islamic studies to architecture. Yes, I know it's more your wife, but you still have them. Uh, and he even has a signboard on his house uh, from an old Kolakangsa railway station that says Kolakangsa. A man of many ver varied interests and a keen observer of art. But throughout all that he does, and the heavy burden of office, he has always exemplified the virtues of being honest, intelligent, and hardworking. And as the man in charge of our National Sovereign Fund, who better than him to speak on the topic of accountability and sustainability tonight? Ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to command Tansri Azman as our second anniversary speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Dato. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the moment we have been waiting for, let us now invite our guest of honor, Yang Berbahagia Tansri Dato Azman Mohta, with a very warm round of applause to deliver his lecture. If you please, Tansri. Um, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala barakatuh, and a very good evening. <coughs> Yang bahagia saudara Datuk Muhammad Faiz Azmi, President of MIA. Thank you for the very kind introduction. As Datuk Faiz um, indicated, we I didn't quite count. I still don't count very well. I'm an accountant, but I don't quite count very well. It's been more than 40 years. I sometimes need to remind myself that Datuk Faiz is among other things, the chairman of PwC Malaysia, my auditor in certain companies, uh, somehow I still see him as you know someone you can bully a little bit in school, right? So, uh, so you know, it's a good reminder. Datuk Zaiton, Muhammad Hassan, the vice president of MIA, yang berusaha Encik Khalid Khan Abdullah Khan, timbalan ketua audit negara kewangan. Uh, yang berusaha Dr. Nur Mazilah binti Datuk Mahzan, the CEO of MIA, from whom I learned just now that 55% of our members are indeed ladies. So guys, we are endangered species, we are only 45, and that moment crossed four years ago, eh, apparently. So you can see where this is going. MIA council members, past council members, past distinguished past presidents and past CEOs, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, uh, much thanks uh, in order to MIA. It is indeed a big honor for me 
you can't imagine uh, standing up here. Uh, you know, you can't help but feel slightly emotional because, you know, we were all one students. In fact, exam is so difficult now. You're not going to ask us to do retake exam because we'll probably fail them, which is not going to look very good. So, so Fayez, not only PwC, you got monopoly on this kind of follow-ups that during show. I shall, I shall stop ribbing my auditor about, you know, Academy Award, Oscars. Okay, sorry. Um, no, it's slightly emotional because we were all once students, and as students, uh, you know. I thank God, and I thank many along the way, which actually I used Datuk Raouf when Datuk Raouf invited me to speak at, you know, the other guys, right? MICPA, our sister um, is what association. Uh, you know, I thought I used that to also pay homage to all the people who helped along the way, and there were many from my father to his friend, the late Dr. Juno Sudin, to my teacher, Cik Gu Ghazali Hassan in MCKK, to Mr. Cohen, who taught me that debits were at the window and credits were at the door. The problem was the next term we changed classes, right? Then I got confused. <laughs> and the many, many, many who, who you know, helped us graduate. So to speak to your peers is indeed an honor. So you have honored me. I will try my very best to live up to your expectations and more importantly to something that begins to approximate the importance and poignancy of the 50th anniversary of the MIA, inshallah. I'm particularly pleased to note that my good friend, my partner in rhyme, uh, my comrade Tan Sri Wahid Omar spoke earlier and uh, indeed, you have chosen to give him an integrity, what, you know, that says it all, extremely appropriate. And you've assigned me accountability. Although, well, Fahir, I could have sworn your letter said sustainability, but anyway, we, we're going to resolve this today. As you can see, I got the word sustainability there somewhere because, never mind, I don't need to prove to you the audit trail is there. That it was actually about accountability and sustainability. And I understand that there'll be a third speaker in your trilogy to speak about trust. So integrity, accountability, and trust, or integrity, accountability, as I will submit, accountability and sustainability ought to be interchangeable, and indeed trust. How appropriate. I think this is very well thought through. So, you know, this is an evening lecture so I stand before you and, you know, rest later, later this evening, inshallah. So I thought, how to speak to accountants and make it, you know, we could go very technical, which I would probably fail, or we could go and try to get to the heart of the matter. Or indeed, there's no elephants in the room. So I realized as I was going through my notes, actually somehow... I've been, I don't know why the community accounting fraternity keeps inviting me back, but there were three previous relatively major uh, speeches, I suppose. First, in 2010, in November 2010, at the World Congress of Accountants, somehow I said, how to address that time Datuk Sri Johan, Faiz, your, your predecessor. So Johan called me one day and said, Tan Sri, can you give a speech at this World Congress accountant? There were like so many accountants, right? It was, it was a hall, I don't know, seven, ten times larger than this hall. There was, sorry, 6,000. So 6,000 accountants, right? I found out there were 723 from the Nigerian Society of Chartered Accountants. I said, who the hell's left in Lagos? But anyway, <laughs> don't go there. So I said, okay, how to summarize? A very boring so I said, let's talk about elephants. I don't know why. Actually, actually there's a reason. I, I think the previous weekend, I brought my children to Kampong Ganda. Who has been to Kampong Ganda? Raise your hands. Is it still there, by the way? It's incredible, right? So you can bathe with the elephants and stuff like that. Then I did a bit more research. And actually, yeah, elephants are incredible. So we, we started talking using the metaphor of elephants, wise and enduring elephants. 38 million years old, socially adept, keen listeners, long memories, reliable, strong, sustainable, and above all, in tune with 
and of great service to its surroundings. Because the topic was given was about accountants sustaining value creation in a borderless economy. And I felt it was actually a call for the profession, at least from me, and we had long debates with Datuk Faiz, with Datuk Raof as my auditor, with Puan Habibah before that, and with my dear friend and colleague at that time, Datuk Zainal, Diku, as Kazana folks would call him. So Diku's got very strong views, as we all know about you know, accounting principles. So frankly, this was around the time when fair value accounting and all this were, were in place. Eh? So I basically, it was a clarion call, or at least, you know, to posit that, hey guys, we got to go back to being relevant and show leadership and trust, which was the topic for the next uh, speech in 2012. All of this, you will see the relevance. At the ACCACFO Summit, where the metaphor was football. Somehow it was football. I must have written this after just watching a football game. So this was the actual slide. I don't know who the hell is this, so excuse me, I don't know who this goalkeeper is. But this is the only one without a question mark and an X. I think at the top there, Wayne Rooney is about to retire. Mario, Bol Balot Bal Bal I cannot pronounce. Mario Balotelli has already retired, or just or might as well retire. And Steven Gerrard has retired. So the point was, accountants should stop trying to be strikers, or even attacking midfielders, right? My view was that accountants it's a very sacred and noble task. We should be goalkeepers and custodians or defenders, or at least defensive midfielder. La. Once in a while, can score a goal. Because certainly, I was giving a practitioner's uh, point of view as the guy or the chap running a sovereign fund. That, you know, when, I, when we call in, whether we're doing big deals or we're trying to value something, when we call in accountants, we expect not too much fanfare, not too much fireworks. What we expect and demand is very solid advice, and we take it extremely seriously. Leave all the flying trapeze to the investment bankers and all these guys. Uh, you know, so, so in that, indeed, many investment bankers are indeed accountants, but they, they are playing a different role, right? So, so that was the point of the metaphor of football in, back in 2012. Now, in, this, in November 2015, which was at the MICPA, 56th commemorative lecture, I invoke the spirit of Jane Austen. I should declare I've not read Jane Austen. Uh, I've met several people, usually you know, girls or women, who've read Jane Austen, uh, which is to discuss about sense and sensibility, accounting and accountability, so the practitioner's perspective, whereby, you know, essentially, the, the, the key point of this particular lecture was to perhaps impress on myself and on everyone of the importance and sacredness of the accounting profession and the trust to which it is given to uphold matters of integrity and governance. In that work, it was crucial to have both substance and form, sense and sensibility, or as the Malay saying goes, bagaikan aur dengan tebing, eh? so the, the, the interrelatedness of this. So if my most recent address to the profession was on the importance of upholding integrity and governance, then this address, the MIA 50th anniversary commemorative lecture, was trying to find a, a, an appropriate metaphor. As you will see later, why rainbows? Uh, there's a reason for this, or several reasons for this. As the title of my speech shows, somewhere over the rainbow suggests that Several things. One, a rainbow. Two, we are not quite there yet, so we need to go somewhere over the rainbow, wherever there may be. And indeed, as perhaps will be apparent, I've landed on the metaphor of rainbow to capture the precepts of accountability and sustainability. By the way, uh, if you have a chance, so thankfully I had a chance, this is a photo of a circle rainbow. It's incredible. Uh, this is the Victoria Falls and the Zambezi River. This is from the bridge that crosses between Zambia and, and um, Zimbabwe. And it is, in, I mean, quite incredible. The reason it is circle is because the gorge is deep enough that you will see the effect of a rainbow, not just Blahatas, eh, as you usually do see on the horizon, but Blabawa sekali. Eh? And indeed, the SDG rainbow, as 
the sustainable development goals, if indeed this is a topic around sustainability, uh, this is their, their, their symbol, eh? around, around rainbow, if you like, and somewhere over the rainbow. Although my, my, my Hindu friends uh, would tell me, if not Monish, not Monish, would tell me that it should be Dharma rather than Nirvana, so I, I stand corrected. So what is over this rainbow? Now, the, firstly, so in this speech, in this lecture, if I may, with that introduction, what I'd like, using the metaphor of somewhere over the rainbow, I would like to make three key points. Firstly, I would like to discuss the principles and philosophy of the two precepts at hand, which is around accountability and sustainability. A second, I would submit that a, a small uh, historical review with a view to the future about three waves in the evolution of accounting and sustainably, sustainability accounting in particular. And finally, the third, the third section, to end on what I see as the five, not one, not two, but five roles of accountants in this noble task of promoting accountability and sustainability. First, ladies and gentlemen, around the philosophy and principles of accountability and sustainability. As mentioned in 2015, during the 56th anniversary commemorative lecture of MICPA, I spoke about sense and sensibility and about governance and about integrity. In essence, and certainly to my colleagues in Kazana, we say this as a mantra, the need to do the right things right in the right way. It's not enough to just choose the right mandate and the right strategy to do the right things, but to do it right, to execute it well, but most importantly, perhaps, to do it in the right way. At the heart of accountability is really the question of integrity. And integri integrity itself is root word, ladies and gentlemen, is integer. An integer, as we know, or being whole, is therefore at the heart of accountability. To be whole or holistic or to be true in our nature, to, to do what is true and to measure what is true, indeed is at the heart of integrity, if we think about it, right? Now, accounting, accountability and accountants indeed have this noble and sacred task of being custodians for integrity through our profession. This is the essence of good governance in accounting that thoughtful compliance and strong performance, as we know, are simply two sides of the same very important coin. Indeed, accountability is crucial to governance. Then the duty of being an accountant literally means fulfilling the trust of the public to hold organizations, public and private and individuals accountable. This entails exercising, as we know, due care, skill, independence, professionalism to an accountant's best ability. With the incredibly rigorous and holistic training that the accounting qualification and associations like MIA provide accountants, I believe, are at a clear advantage when it comes to telling the truth equitably and dispassionately. Now, whether this telling the truth is simply discharging our duties to uphold public trust, it may mean the simple and monotonous act of yet another cross-casting and tabulation check after midnight in a windows, windowless room in a basement of a PLC somewhere. I hope they give you better digs. This was actually what I used to do when I was the um, financial accountant, general ledger, Lembaga Electric Negara, and a certain Zain, Muhammad Zainal Shahri was a PW partner after midnight. We didn't even have a room with a window. Down there, we are cooking up. Not cooking up, sorry. Cut that strike there. <laughs> Oops. Uh, 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 you know, casting the accounts nicely. <laughs> or from that very humble basement, or it could be the grand, some may say heroic act of standing firm with grace under considerable pressure or fire of only signing off an account where they deserve to be signed off. Guys. Big, small, medium, we all have different roles. The point is, we have roles. That's integrity. 
That's accountability. Whether people see it or people don't see it, we know. We are members of an ancient organization and that sacred trust we must